This video was sponsored by Just Answer, a better way to reach professionals anytime you need help. Probably the most common problem you'll see in your home is running out of electrical space. Now I'm not talking about the capacity that feeds your house like 100 or 200 amps. I'm talking about your circuit breaker panel. As you can see in mine, I am completely maxed for space. There's no more physical room to add any other additional circuit breakers. Now this house even has a sub panel, but as we open this door, you can see it's also completely full. Now when you run out of space like this as a homeowner, you have a few options. Now the best and the most expensive will be to add an additional sub panel. But what you probably don't know about is there's an easier solution. Say you just need to add one or two more circuits and you don't really want to spend a lot of money. We're also only going to be dealing with 120 volt circuits. That means that we're going to be using one of these circuit breakers that just takes a single wire. Now some quick basics about electric circuits. They've each got three wires. You've got a black, which is the hot wire, a white, which is your neutral, and then a copper wire, which is your ground. The hot wire, the black one, is the one we want to deal with here. And as you can see by looking at my breakers, the black wires are being fed into each one of these individual breakers. But what you likely don't know is that you can actually put two of these black wires together, combining two circuits into just a single breaker, and then you would free up a circuit breaker position. Your circuit breaker's job is to trip if anything tries to draw more power than it's rated for. So if you take two 15 amp breakers and combine those circuits into one, you're not getting 30 amps. You're actually just combining the ability to draw more power off of that single breaker. The reason you've got to think before combining these circuits is if you do two circuits that take a lot of power, something like your kitchen outlets and a bathroom, they're going to be tripping all the time because the combined power will still only be 15 amps. So the real secret to making this work is to pick a lower power circuit, that doorbell wire, or just an individual outlet that really isn't used much in your home. By combining that with another lower powered circuit, you may likely never trip that breaker. So if you had two 15 amp breakers like this, these would be the two that we're going to work on. You would simply unscrew both You would get them both under the same terminal. And now at this point, our breaker is free. We turn our power on, both circuits are being energized. I'd also recommend that you only do this with 15 amp circuits. Typically 20 amp circuits are gonna be in places like your garage, your bathroom, or your kitchen. So combining two high power circuits together, even if you can, will likely result in them getting overloaded all the time and that breaker will probably keep tripping. But remember that once you free up one of those circuit breaker positions, you can replace it with any size circuit breaker that's correct for your panel and of course the circuit you're wiring. Say you want to install a brand new air conditioner in your house and it needs a 20 amp 120 volt circuit, but you've run out of space. Now you could combine two 15 amp circuits that draw a lot less power and now you've freed that position. Now, of course, the other benefit here is this is pretty much free, right? You're just combining two wires together, but you do have to be careful of a couple of pitfalls that can cause you real problems. Most circuit breakers on the market are not rated for two individual wires. This particular panel here is a square DQO that's different than the very common home line that does not allow you to put two wires together. When you shove them in there, one can move slightly and then you can have an overheating issue and potentially a fire. Now this breaker is rated for two wires, but these are not that common and you're going to find most of them are not going to take two wires. So an easier way to eliminate the potential problem is to just do this. We'll start by switching off our breaker, take our two wires out, and we're going to introduce a third wire. This is where we make our pigtail. Strip both sides of a short length of wire. Now we'll use a wire connector. Here I'm using a Wago. This makes easy work of connecting three wires. Just open up this terminal. Now we've made our first connection. Now one at a time. Insert our others. Now we've got all three huts together. Now we put the one single wire back in our existing breaker. We've got them in a wire connector. You could push that off to the side and now you've got your circuit breaker position open. But this next recommendation is actually easier. It's safer and it doesn't really cost too much at all. It's using a special kind of circuit breaker called a tandem breaker. This simply replaces your existing breaker. And when you put one of these in, you actually get two circuit breakers, but they only take the physical space of one. 
These are super popular because they go in easily. Now you might be thinking these tandems sound great, so why not just put them in your entire panel? You'll never have to worry ever about upgrading it. Well, tandems do have a few issues. The first is the cost. A tandem breaker can cost five to 10 times the price. So some of the breakers in my panel are just nine bucks, but the tandems cost them a $75, they're big money. So if you're gonna use them, typically one or two is not a big deal. But the next issue is of course physical space. Now you can fit the circuits, but there are other wires. As I told you, each circuit has a black, white, and a ground. Well, you need to put those whites and grounds somewhere else, and oftentimes in a panel. They're only built to have, say, 40 circuits like this one here. You will run out of other room for those neutrals and the grounds. And that's exactly what happened in the old days. People were jamming tandems in there like crazy, and panels were overheating, and there just wasn't enough room for those other wires. Don't use more than two tandem breakers. You're gonna get yourself into trouble and you'll run out of room. And that's exactly what happened here. I was already double tapped on nine individual circuits. I already had an existing sub panel and I've already got these two tandem breakers in here that are rated for 20 amps a piece. So this panel was absolutely packed. So the last solution is of course to add a sub panel. Sub panels are gonna offer you the best option in terms of expanding your electrical capacity. They connect to one breaker position in your existing panel. So here I removed two circuit breakers, I installed this 100 amp breaker, and then I connected it through this conduit to a brand new sub panel. And as you can see, this panel has a lot of room for growth. Now if you pay somebody else to install your sub panel, it's gonna cost you anywhere between two and four grand. That's a lot of money. And the thing that will shock you the most is the price of the actual sub panel. The panel you see here is a Square D QO panel, considered to be one of the best ones you can get for residential use. And this entire panel with 40 positions, along with the cover, only cost me $188. And it's not that electricians are blowing up the markup on these things. It does take a lot of work to put them in. You need to do some careful planning. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any thoughts on expanding your electrical systems in your house, be sure to comment below. Or if you think I've done something wrong, be sure to let me know as well. And if you don't know about Just Answer, it's a service that connects you with professionals across the country, people like electricians, lawyers, doctors, and plumbers. Here I'm asking them a question about what kind of wire I should use to legally connect up my sub panel. But this unique service is different because it's tax time right now. You might have financial questions. You can send any question you like. They'll find a licensed certified professional that'll answer anything you ask with information that you can actually count on. I encourage you to check out this unique service. Look in the description. I have a special link and you can try it out for seven days.